Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering another question from one of our members who wanted to know how to attach dynamic wires to objects in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member over at cgshortcuts.com or on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So this one was requested by Dugan, who wanted to hang wires off an animated plane like this. But you could easily use this technique to connect objects together with wires like this, or create something a bit more abstract like this. And I'll leave a link to where you can download all three project files down below, but let's see how we can do this. So I've got a plane in my scene already, which is being deformed by a shader effector to give us a bit of motion like this. And if you wanna see exactly how that works, you can find that in the project file, but this effect should work with any object, whether it's deforming or not. But basically what we wanna do is attach a bunch of random wires to the underside of our object and make them dynamic. So the first thing we need to do is generate a bunch of random points across this surface. And for our points, I'm actually going to use a sphere, which I'll shrink down to one centimeter in size and we'll clone our tiny sphere onto the object. So we'll need to put that inside a cloner object like so which puts the clones in a grid shape by default. But we want them to stick to the deforming plane instead. So we'll switch this to object mode. And in the object slot, we'll drag in our plane. And now we've got a bunch of little spheres cloned to the surface of the plane. Because by default, the cloner distribution is set to surface. But we could also set this to vertex if we wanted to hang our wires from the vertices instead and have them evenly spaced out but I want these to be randomly placed. So we'll stick with the surface mode and we can control the randomness by adjusting the seed value down here as well, which changes the distribution of the clones across the surface. And we can change the amount of clones and the amount of wires we'll have by adjusting the count value here as well. But I'll leave that at 20 for now. So next we wanna generate wires between each of these points. And we can do that with a tracer object. And because we already had our cloner selected, that's automatically been added to our tracer as the trace link. But in order to generate lines between these points, we just need to change the tracing mode to connect all objects. And now we've got this line going between each one of the clones. But we do want those wires to hang down a bit and not be so straight and linear. And there's actually a hidden tool in C4D you might not know about that does exactly that. So as a child of our tracer, let's add a catenary spline modifier. And that's going to instantly turn our straight lines into hanging wires, which is very cool. And we've got a few settings we can play with over here. We can adjust the amount of sagging, which I might decrease, or we could give it a bit of variation, or adjust the bias, which I think is the range between the straight and sagging wires. And really, as easy as that, we're getting some pretty good looking wires or cables hanging off our object. And because these are being generated from our clones, we can play this and they'll follow along with the animation nicely as well. So if you just needed some quick wires, you could probably just render this, but we're going to take this one step further and turn these into dynamic wires. So first, I just wanna make sure that everything's in the right order here. Cinema 4D calculates from the top to bottom. So I'll have the plane calculated first then the cloner below that where we generate the points and the tracer below that where we generate the wires from the points. And that'll ensure the simulation is calculated correctly. So then I'll convert our tracer setup into an editable spline by running a current state to object, which gives us this spline, which we can rename to wires and we'll hide the tracer for now. And now that this is a static spline, it no longer follows along with the animation but that's fine because we're going to reattach it very soon. But let's first make our wires dynamic by grabbing that and applying a rope tag, which is part of the cloth dynamic system. And now if we play this, the spline will just drop straight down with gravity like so. But we now need a way to reattach it to the clones dynamically. So our cloner is going to need a dynamics tag as well. So we'll give it a cloth tag and if we were to hit play now, the clone spheres would also be treated as cloth and fall straight down along with our wires. But we want these to be part of our cloth simulation, but not be treated as cloth themselves. We just want them as they were following along with the animation. 
And we can do that over in the cloth tag under mix animation, where we can enable with pins at 100% influence, which will allow the clones to be part of the simulation, but stay exactly where they were without being deformed as cloth. And now that both objects are part of the simulation, we can connect them to each other. So we'll grab the wires spline and add a dynamic connector. And now if we turn on update live, we can start to see our connections, which are highlighted in yellow. And basically what it's doing is looking for any other dynamic objects nearby our wire within this search radius and connecting them together within the yellow highlighted area. So I can probably lower this. So just the tips of the wires are connected to the spheres and we'll see what that gives us. And now we've reattached the wires and they're now dynamic and being affected by gravity or any other forces we choose to add to our scene. But I think they might be a bit too stretchy for wires. So let's take a quick look at our rope tag. Let's drop the bendiness and stretchiness and try that. Let's also decrease the target length to shrink the wires a bit, which can also help. Like so. Or we could also hit Control D to bring up the scene simulation settings where under simulation, we can increase the sub steps to get a more accurate simulation. So if we just let that settle for a second, I think that looks better. And if we want to give the wires some thickness, we can grab our dynamic spline and add a sweep as a parent. Then we'll need a profile shape for our sweep. So we'll use a circle, which needs to be a lot smaller. And we'll drag that into here. And now we're ready to texture and render this. You could also switch out your spheres with any other geometry, like I did with this example, to make them look like they're coming out of little rings. Or you can just hide them from the render if you don't want them to be visible and just have the wires. And that's pretty much it for a quick and easy dynamic wire setup. You can grab the render ready project files for this from our website at the link below. And if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a like or a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources so you can master Cinema 4D faster. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.